All right, how many of you had the introduction to linear algebra in college? How many of you made, did it make sense to? I, more importantly, mathematician, well, mathematicians have been, mathematicians are incredibly bad at understand, at communicating to people. They forget the, the rule of, they forget the rules of presentation. Tell somebody what you're going to tell them, tell them, and tell them what you told them. They leave out the flat first part and the last part. And so this is what they should have told you to begin with. Sets. Sets are a collection of elements. No elements are repeated, there's no order. Examples of sets, you've got things like integers, men's names, transformations on a geometric object. Now a field is a set together with, <laughs> with uh, two operations. Those operations are addition and multiplication. That's just like the numbers we're familiar with. So the point, point has no dimensions, has coordinates. Coordinates locate the point in space. Space. That I'm not going over the properties of fields. <laughs> they act like the normal numbers we use. <laughs> space. An ordered set of points. The points have consistent naming system. Line. But any two points define line. So, once again, any two points define a line. Huh, we're missing something from this slide. Line segment. Line segment is defined by two points on a line. Those points, we can represent that as the coordinates of those two points. However, the two points, doesn't matter which way we put them. That's a line, line segment. Doesn't matter which endpoint you start with. Vector. Vector, well, a line segment has length. And that's in a position in space. Vector, vector has length and has direction. We can name it like this. And because of the direction, the coordinates don't match. Or if you name it differently, you get two different directions. One pointing up, one pointing down. So it has length, has direction, doesn't have coordinates. So these are all the same vector, even though they're between different spaces, or different points. So as long as the distance and the length are the same, they're the same vector. Now, it's much easier to move, talk about vectors if you just refer to them all as starting at zero, the middle of our space. Okay, so. <laughs> these, here we have two vectors that are named. Here they are, and here's their new name, ignoring where they start from. And we can ignore the coordinate where the zero point is. We can just talk about defect talk about their lengths and position, or lengths and directions. So adding vectors, you put them end to end, and you draw a line between them. Multiplying a vector by a scalar. So the field that they exist over, the, the units of length basically, you can think of it that way, those are the scalars. It's like two times north 35 degrees and five miles. And when you multiply by a scalar, it just changes the length. Linear independence. All right, I have to go fast. Linear independence. The, if you can, the only two vectors are said to be linearly independent. If the only way you can add up, get back to zero, is by, is by essentially multiplying them all by zero. So if you look at this and you sort of add up all the vertical ones and all the horizontal ones, what you get is it goes over and back and up and down. And you get zero and zero for each of those together. Now, so let's take these three vectors. Now you have one pointing up, you've got a result that sort of your vertical ones end about there and your horizontal ones go over there. But you can get back to zero with the third one. Vector space. 
every possible combination of a set of factors. Shall I continue? Yes. Okay. Keep going. Yeah. Spanning set. Set of vectors which can be used to generate the entire vector space. Basis. The smallest linearly independent set of vector space that's sufficient to span the entire space. Basis is essentially the set of coordinates for a vector space. Now, the dimension, <laughs> dimension of a vector space, number of vectors in the basis, subspace, set of vectors which is completely enclosed in the vector space. You can't get out of it using addition and multiplication. Linear transformation. You have a figure that's connected. Linear transformation leaves those vectors connected. Every linear transformation can be represented as a matrix. Linear transformations can move between dimensions. We take a three-dimensional vector in three-dimensional space and we move it to two-dimensional. Null space. When we have this transformation here, every vertical line vanishes, or the straight up and down vectors vanish. Essentially, you're taking this one-dimensional space and you're compressing it into zero. Subspace. Well, so dimensions of a vector. Eh. Oh. Delete those. Reordered. Oh, I'm going the wrong way. That's what's wrong. <laughs> All right. So when you do a linear transformation, there are a set of vectors that don't change directions. Those vectors are fixed. They stay the same place. Those are called eigenvectors. But they change in length. And how much they change in length are called the eigenvalues. Now, the rank, when you have a linear transformation, it takes it from one space to another. The size of the space that it goes to is the rank, the number of dimensions of the target space. And the size of the null space plus the size of the target space equal the size of the original vector space. Rather, the dimensions of the null space and the dimensions of the target space equal the dimensions of the original space. And that's it. One semester of linear algebra in 10-ish minutes. <laughs>